All right, guys, it looks like things are getting spicy up there in space. We've got competing moon bases. Now we have competing cities on Mars. Well, let's talk about it. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, I mean, most of you guys are probably aware we've got, you know, China uh, set to develop a base on Mars, possibly a fully automated base on Mars. Uh, yeah, and now comes the, the new word that uh, China says it has found a way to create oxygen, water, and rocket fuel from moon dust. All right, well, we'll have to see how that all plays out. Uh, but yes, China is up there doing stuff. So what is the U.S. doing? Well, of course, the U.S. has a response to that. Uh, and they are planning to build a nuclear plant up there in space. Going nuclear. Interim NASA Administrator and Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy expected to announce a fast-track plan to deploy a nuclear reactor to the moon by 2030. That's five years before China and Russia's joint plan to do the very same thing. Mills Hayes is here with those details. Okay, Mills, give us the latest and also what's at stake with being the first. Good morning, Marky. Details still very limited right now. Politico reporting that this is something that's been discussed before, but this new directive would set a firm timeline for the first time. The United States is one step closer to extended stays on the moon and to space exploration even beyond. Politico is reporting that Secretary Sean Duffy is going to announce plans to build a nuclear reactor on the moon. NASA had been working towards having a 40 kilowatt reactor on the moon, but Duffy's plan is reportedly to get proposals for a 100 kilowatt reactor to launch by 2030. Well, having nuclear power in space is really important for any human exploration beyond low Earth orbit because the moon has two weeks of day, but then it has two weeks of night. So you can't have solar power on the moon uh, unless you have some really huge batteries, right? Because you need a battery at nighttime like we have on this space station. It's been over 50 years since an American set foot on the moon, and this project would allow for more people to stay on the moon longer. Okay, there you go. Ambitious plans uh, to build some sort of moon base powered by a nuclear you know, power plant up there on the moon. Uh, meanwhile, we have China also developing uh, some sort of base on the moon. Will they be in competition with each other? Will it get hot? Uh, you know, time will tell. Hopefully there's plenty of space up there on the moon uh, for both parties but as time goes by, you have to wonder how things are going to shake out. Now, when I look up at the moon, I want to be filled with wonder. I don't want to be thinking about China and the U.S. warring uh, over the, the, the damn moon uh, and also possible nuclear contamination uh, of the moon or, or, you know, who knows what. I mean, you get hit by a, a, an asteroid or a meteor, right? Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, look at all the craters on that sucker. Uh, you know, that thing gets hit, but okay, it gets it gets even uh, more interesting. Well, first of all, let's move on to uh, what uh, Sean Duffy himself had to say, uh, the uh, NASA NASA's acting chief. We're in a race to the moon, in a race with China to the moon, and uh, to have a, a base on the moon, we need energy. And uh, some of the key locations on the moon, we're going to get solar power, but uh, this vision technology is uh, critically important. And so we've spent hundreds of million dollars studying, can we do it? We are now going to move beyond studying and we are going, we have given direction to go, let's start to deploy our technology to move to actually make this a reality. And I think the stat we have is, uh, it's, a, it's a 100 kilowatt output. That's the same amount of energy a 2000 square foot home uses every three and a half days. So we're not talking about massive technology. We're not launching this live. Uh, that's obviously, uh, if you have any questions about that, no, we're not launching it live. But again, energy is important. And if we're gonna be able to sustain life on the moon to then go to Mars, this technology is critically important. Um, and I would just note that we, we're, we're behind, right? If, if, we're, if we're going to engage um, in the race to the moon and the race to Mars, we have to get our act together. We have to we have to marshal all of our resources, all of our focus on going to the moon, which is what we're going to do. Okay, they're going to the moon. Of course, according to the secret space fleet 
victims or experiencers, they're already there and they are using the moon as a, a staging uh, area for, uh, you know, going to Mars and likely beyond. If any of that is real. Now, there's, of course, there's a number of experiencers. They don't all line up with each other, but they could because of compartmentalization. Let me know if you think there is a secret space fleet. For Personally, I do think that the UFO control group is going off world. They are going to the moon and Mars. I don't know about all the experiencers and their accounts. How much of that is legit? I suspect some of it probably is. Uh, where it gets into the time travel stuff and all that, you know, I, I hate time travel. But I do acknowledge that the, uh, the, the, the apparent way that UFOs work uh, seems to allow for that. The, the genuinely NHI vehicles seem to be able to come and go not just from the Earth, but also potentially from this dimension or this set of dimensions. And once you get beyond the fourth dimension, if we're calling that time, then you're outside of time and you can pop in and out anywhere you want. So I do think that certain NHI do have this ability. They may even come from a place beyond time. As Whitley Strieber says, they are fishers in the stream of time, coming in and plucking us out and uh, going back out again uh, once they deposit us back. So, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? I mean, let me know what your temperature is on that. I don't. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the 20 and back stuff is so weird. But OK, uh, moving on from that, we do have more to talk about. Uh, not only do we have bases on the moon, uh, competing bases on the moon, but now we have a city on Mars, competing cities on Mars. This is from uh, Deep Prasad, uh, who is the quantum computer guru that I mention all the time because he is an experiencer and he has a fantastic ET contact experience where he was being given this download of information. All he could see was hieroglyphics, except for one thing, and that was DNA. That was the only thing that he could see in this whole ex experience that he could understand in this download. Uh, so if, if what he says is accurate and what, if the, what the beings were relaying to him is legit, then the beings have a strong interest in DNA. Now, we know that based on all the hybrids they're creating, and that's what the Nazca mummies seem to be. Uh, we have you know, various subspecies or whatever they are of tridactyl beings in the Nazca area. And some of those beings seem to still be around and to be worldwide, like the uh, Siberian being and, and various others. And I've talked about that in multiple videos. Um, but yeah, so they definitely have an interest in genetics. Uh, I think that his experience is uh, significant because of that, also because of the way the UFO superimposed itself over him, which is something that Peter Maxwell Slattery has talked about, even described how that could be done. So I really like Deep. I like his experience. Uh, but now he wants to build a city on Mars. Okay, here's what he says. Hello, my name is Deep, CEO of Star Vaza Corporation. While I've been around for 29 years as of the time of writing this, much of what's in this document began forming when I was a teenager. Over the last four years, I launched a hyperspectral satellite with SpaceX, acquired full ownership of quantum generative materials, and started building the foundations of artificial general physics intelligence, which I call AGPI. What's followed since then is the early scaffolding of Starvasa in Yug, Siberia. I don't know how he pronounces that. I'm going to have to listen to him pronounce that before I am able to nail that as well as I typically do. Uh, those who have followed me on Twitter for a couple of years will recognize the latter name from my username, talking about Yug, Siberia. One of the top 10 interesting experiences I've had would be previously employing a former U.S. Navy pilot who testified to Congress about their encounters with UAP. Uh, I hold a patent on autonomous satellites for mining in my mineral detection with several more pending. You get the point. I'm not a crackhead uh, you'll meet on the street necessarily. Although between you and me, I won't blame you if you conclude that after reading this. You see, I am founding a civilization on Mars. And no, he did not put this up on April 1st. 
It will not answer to earth, he says, though it will engage in diplomacy. Well, that's nice of him. Access to food, water, shelter, health care, consumer goods, and many more will be basic human right, rights granted to everybody who can make it to Mars and join Yug Saibara as a citizen and become Cyberan. Cy that's what he calls it. Inside Yug Saibara, all Cyberans will enjoy a universal basic high income meaning work uh, working will become a choice for those who want to accumulate more power and resources. That being said, capitalism within Yug Saibara will evolve into a hyper meritocracy digitally backed by crypto and AI technologies. Politicians in the military, as we know it, will no longer exist. Instead, every citizen will become their own politician and have the power of a military person. The current system will be replaced with a high-trust society of peoples, each capable of defending themselves and each armed and protected by advanced technology to prevent crime. Furthermore, the spiritual, intellectual, and technological growth, as well as the preservation of mankind, will be prioritized, especially in the face of increasing divergence to the human body and mind. Gene engineering, embryo editing, Neural interfaces such as Neuralink, all are changing our bodies more than tattoos ever could. As a result, it will become crucial we monitor and manage closely the gap between a purely biological human being that exists today in, say, a city of superhuman beings who were born inside artificial wombs on Mars and have 250 IQ points on average. Consider this my all-out sincere effort at a new beginning that could allow us to shed the zero-sum nature that Earth societies are currently based off of. Yog Saibara will enable humans to peacefully coexist with AI, superhumans, as well as non-human intelligence. We Saibarans will establish the center of humanity of sorts, a place where humans can come to live, breathe, Discover and play. Okay, well, he's talking about this utopian city. Of course, he does go on to say that um, uh, the, the government does have the right to, uh, you know, uh, do violence uh, on criminals. Uh, so there might be some sort of, uh, you know, martial law or something. I, I don't know. Uh, some sort of uh, execution of uh, murderers or something. Uh, yeah, he goes through the phases of this, how he's going to do it. Um, you know, terraforming Mars, making Mars rain, the first blooms on Mars, the cyberin intelligence layer, magnetic shielding begins. Um, yeah, he, he's got this um, uh, layout. I think he, he wants uh, this uh, to be done within like 30 years or something, or at least the opening uh, steps of this to be done within 30 years. Uh, so I will let you read the full thing at your leisure, but I thought that was super fascinating. Uh, we could have this city on Mars, according to Deep Prasad. I mean, sounds pretty cool. Um, we've got Elon also talking about establishing a, a colony on Mars. So we could potentially have competing colonies or cities on Mars. Meanwhile, we have... Um, competing potentially moon bases, one with a nuclear reactor. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how things go. I'm waiting to see if Deep is, you know, going to admit that he's pulling our leg here, but he seems sincere. I don't know. I like Deep. I hope that he does build a utopian city on Mars that interacts peacefully with advanced beings uh, and allows for the spiritual growth of the humans there however human they may turn out to be. Uh, but anyway, we'll see. It's a fun story. I look forward to seeing where that goes, if it goes anywhere. Again, I half expect a deep to come out saying he's pulling her leg. Uh, but let me know what you think about Deep Prasad's City on Mars. Of course, I'll link to his full manifesto, <laughs> and you can read it at your leisure. Uh, and I will uh, link to the, the stuff on uh, about the moon so you can watch those full uh, news pieces and speeches from uh, NASA's acting director talking about building a nuclear power plant on the moon 
uh, to power our efforts there in competition with China. So let me know what you think about it all. Things are getting awfully spicy up there. Meanwhile, we've got SpaceX uh, running around up there. Right? We, we have SpaceX and we've got Space Force. Uh, David Grush uh, remotely piloted an experimental craft that Space Force launched. We still don't know what that thing was doing up there. We don't know a lot of what Space Force is doing up there. Likely some of it has to do with competition or even, you know, overt, you know, acts against or preventative uh, from Russia or China or something like that. There's probably some spicy stuff already happening in our orbit. And of course, there's various pieces of evidence that some satellites do have like laser weapons uh, that may have done stuff here on Earth. Um, it's weird times, guys. It's weird times, but I'm here to report on it. Let me know what you think about it all in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Uh, smash the bell and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, if you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars, and I really do appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.